To actually make the DNA ring, the first step is to order DNA strands. After submitting the design sequences online, DNA strands will be delivered to you in a few days. The second step is to prepare double-stranded molecules, which requires mixing two strands in a test tube, using a PCR machine to warm it up and cool it down, and running a gel to collect the properly formed double strands. After some of the 112 different DNA strands have formed double-stranded molecules, the third step is to take the required amount of each of the resulting 72 different molecules, as indicated by the numbers in the note while abstraction, and mix them together in a special glass test tube called a cuvette. Four of these strands are attached to fluorescent molecules that generate different colors of light, so we can watch the DNA brain's behavior. Now we're ready to play a logical mind-reading game with this DNA brain. First, you think of a scientist, choosing from these four. Then you tell the DNA brain the answers to these questions by adding corresponding DNA strands into the cuvette. To make the game interesting, you should be tricky and only give yes or no answers to some of the questions and leave the rest as unknown. Yes and no each corresponds to a specific DNA strand, and nothing needs to be added if the answer is unknown. Now we let the DNA brain guess whom you have in mind. We use an instrument called a spectrofluorometer to record the fluorescence levels indicating the output of each neuron. Suppose you told the DNA brain, the scientist I'm thinking of was born in the 20th century but was not a mathematician. The output signals are changing. If we look at the signals that go high, the solid trajectories indicate the answers that are yes, and the dotted trajectories indicate the answers that are no. The DNA brain is saying, the scientist you're thinking of didn't study neural networks and was British. This pattern of answers suggests that the DNA brain guess is Rosalind Franklin. That's correct. Suppose you told the DNA brain, the scientist I'm thinking of was British and a mathematician. All four answers become yes. The DNA brain is saying, the scientist you're thinking of studied neural networks and was born in the 20th century. This pattern of answers suggests that the DNA brain's guess is Alan Turing. Also correct. Suppose you told the DNA brain, the scientist I'm thinking of was British, but was not born in the 20th century. All solid and dotted trajectories go high, which means that no question has a valid answer. The reason is that the only scientist known to the DNA brain who was not born in the 20th century is Santiago Romanic Hall, but he is Spanish. When this invalid pattern appears, it is as if the DNA brain is saying, wrong information, I cannot recognize this scientist. What we have, then, is a test tube of 112 different DNA strands interacting with each other to process information, recognize patterns of events, and respond to the molecular environment. Although it only has four artificial neurons, which are highly simplified models of real biological neurons, it still recalls its memories and acts like a tiny, lovely brain. If we look at the evolutionary history of intelligence, perhaps the highly evolved brain and the limited form of intelligence seen in single cells share similar computational principles, just programmed in different substrates. Perhaps these computational principles first arose in the ancient RNA world. In the story of Plato's cave, the objects that people see are just the shadows of the truth. Maybe Plato would tell us the brain, the neuron, and the molecule are just the different shadows cast upon reality by the same universal mathematical truth about the structure of intelligence.